Good afternoon. We have just finished an extraordinary uh, summit uh, of NATO leaders to address uh, the biggest threat uh, to our security in a generation, President Putin's war against uh, Ukraine. The people of Ukraine are resisting with uh, courage and determination, fighting for their freedom and for their future. We stand with them. President Zelensky addressed us with an impassioned message, thanking NATO allies for the significant support we are providing and stressing the vital importance of even more military assistance. Today, NATO leaders agreed that we must uh, and will provide further support to Ukraine. We will continue to impose unprecedented costs on Russia and we will reinforce allied deterrence and defense. Leaders approved uh, our four new battle groups in Bulgaria, Hungary, Romania and Slovakia. These are in addition to the four already in the Baltic countries and Poland. So we have eight uh, multinational uh, NATO battle groups uh, now, from the uh, Baltic Sea to the Black Sea. Across uh, Europe, there are uh, 100,000 US troops uh, 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 supporting NATO efforts, and European allies and Canada have also stepped up. We have 40,000 forces under direct NATO command, mostly in the eastern part of the alliance, backed by major air and naval power, including an unprecedented five carrier strike groups from the high north to the Mediterranean. Today, NATO leaders uh, agreed to reset our deterrence and defense for the longer term, to face a new security reality. On land, we will have substantially more forces in the eastern part of the alliance at higher readiness, with more pre-positioned equipment and supplies. In the air, we will deploy more jets and strengthen our integrated air and missile defense. At sea, we will have um, carrier strike groups, submarines and significant numbers of combat ships on a persistent basis. We will also strengthen our cyber defences and enhance our exercises focusing on collective defence and interoperability. I expect we will decide on the details at our next summit in Madrid in June. Today, Allied leaders also agreed to provide further support to Ukraine helping to uphold their fundamental right to self-defense. Allies are also equipping uh, Ukraine with significant military supplies, including anti-tank and air defense systems and drones, which are proving highly effective, as well as substantial financial and humanitarian aid. Today, we agreed to do more, including cyber security assistance and equipment to help Ukraine protect against biological, chemical, radiological and nuclear threats. This could include detection, protection and medical uh, supplies, as well as uh, training for decontamination and crisis management. We are determined to do uh, all we can to support Ukraine and I welcome the concrete offers uh, of assistance made by allies today. At the same time, we have a responsibility to ensure the conflict does not escalate further, because this would be even more dangerous and more devastating. Allies agreed that we must also increase our support for other partners at risk from uh, Russia um, and in, uh, from, uh, at risk from Russian threats and interference, including Georgia and Bosnia and Herzegovina. Working together and with uh, the European Union, we must help them uphold their sovereignty and strengthen their resilience. We also addressed uh, Beijing's role in the crisis 
Today, uh, Allied leaders called on China to refrain from supporting uh, Russia's war effort. China must not provide economic or military support for the Russian invasion. Instead, Beijing should use its significant influence on Russia and promote uh, an uh, immediate peaceful resolution. Allies also agree that Belarus must stop acting as an accomplice to Putin's invasion. At today's meeting, leaders reaffirmed strong, uh, our strong commitment to NATO's open door policy under Article 10 of the Washington Treaty. NATO enlargement has been an historic success, spreading democracy, freedom and prosperity across Europe. One month uh, since the start of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, NATO's security environment has fundamentally changed for the long haul. And we are responding. But security, but security does not come for free, and doing more will cost more. So NATO leaders agreed to redouble efforts to meet the defense investment pledge we made in 2014. Allies will submit additional plans on how to meet the pledge in time for the Madrid summit in June. And I welcome that a number of allies today announced plans for significant increases in defence spending. At this dangerous time, transatlantic unity and solidarity are vital. Europe and North America are standing and will continue to stand strong together in NATO. And with that, I'm ready to take your questions. Okay, CNN. Hi, Mr. Secretary General, thank you. Um, President Zelensky, in his address to NATO, accused Russia of deploying phosphorus munitions. I'm wondering whether NATO has seen evidence of that and what your response is or would be. And then I'm wondering, did you discuss during this meeting a permanent basing of forces in any of these countries, such as the Baltics, um, and abandoning the NATO-Russia Founding Act? So we are resetting NATO's deterrence and defense for the long term. Uh, with more troops, uh, with uh, more air assets and more maritime capabilities. We have already increased our presence in the East, and today we decided on four new battle groups, and the leaders uh, agreed to task our military commanders to provide options uh, for uh, a long-term reset of our uh, presence, our military posture in the Eastern part of the Alliance and across the whole Alliance. Uh, details will be then uh, decided at uh, our summit uh, in June. But that comes on top of what we have already done. So this is uh, uh, long term. Uh, we are prepared for long haul because uh, uh, we can already today say that, uh, uh, that the Russian invasion, President Putin's invasion of Ukraine, uh, has changed our security environment uh, for the long term. It's a new reality. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a new normal, and NATO is responding for the long term. Uh, we have seen um, uh, very credible reports about uh, uh, the, use of, um, also the use of the military force against uh, civilians, uh, and uh, of course this is of great concern uh, for all NATO allies. NBC. Secretary General, thank you for taking my question. How do you believe NATO will respond if China begins to support Russia economically and perhaps with military supplies? And also, do you believe that there's a role to play um, for NATO when it comes to alleviating energy costs? And I'm talking about speaking directly to Saudi Arabia and other OPEC producers. Thank you. So NATO allies are coordinating their efforts when it comes to also uh, energy security, and it was also addressed in the meeting uh, today uh, to uh, step up supplies, to diversify uh, uh, sources of supply, and, uh, and also, also to reduce dependence on supplies from, from uh, Russia. Uh, and uh, and uh, later on today, I also participate in the G7 meeting. And of course, in different frameworks, G7, working with the EU, uh, uh, there are different formats where NATO allies address the need uh, to strengthen energy security and reduce dependence on, on, uh, on, on Russian oil and, uh, and gas. 
Uh, our message to China is that they should join the rest of the world uh, and clearly condemn uh, the brutal war uh, against uh, uh, Ukraine uh, and not support uh, uh, Russia, uh, neither uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, economic support or, of course, not with military support. Okay, we'll go to Interfax Ukraine, <coughs> lady in the second row. Yeah. General News Agency Interfax Ukraine, I would like to ask you if Polish leadership put at the table today for discussion the proposal to send peacekeeping mission to Ukraine, and if yes, what kind of discussion it was, and is there is some conclusion? Thank you. As we discussed the wide range of uh, issues, uh, and, uh, uh, and the message is that we have to stand united. Uh, and also that we need to uh, provide support to Ukraine, but at the same time, we have a responsibility uh, to ensure that this conflict do not uh, become a full-fledged war uh, between uh, NATO and Russia. And, uh, and that's also the reason uh, why allies have made declared that we will not deploy uh, troops on the ground in, uh, in Ukraine, uh, because uh, the only uh, way to do that is to be prepared to engage in full uh, conflict uh, with uh, Russian uh, troops. Okay, Financial Times. Thank you very much, Secretary General. Congratulations on your uh, annual extension. Um, you said in the statement that allies agreed to enhance preparedness and readiness for chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear threats. Is that based on credible intelligence that those threats could be imminent? And how does the alliance uh, strengthen its protection against those threats? Thank you. So we are concerned, uh, partly because we see the rhetoric uh, and we see that Russia is uh, trying to create some kind of pretext accusing Ukraine, United States, NATO allies for preparing uh, to use uh, chemical and biological uh, weapons. And we have seen before that this uh, 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 way of accusing others is actually a way to create, to create a pretext for do the same uh, uh, themselves. Uh, and, and, of course, the accusations against Ukraine and NATO allies are absolutely false. Um, um, any use of chemical uh, weapons will um, uh, totally change the nature of the conflict. It will be a blatant violation of international uh, law, and um, uh, it will have uh, widespread consequences and, of course, be extremely uh, dangerous. Um, it will affect the people in Ukraine, but there's also a risk that will have a direct effect on people living in NATO countries, because uh, uh, we can see contamination, we can see the spread of um, chemical agents or uh, biological uh, weapons into our uh, countries. Um, uh, we also know that Russia has used chemical agents against its own opposition, and they have used it on NATO territory in Salisbury before. And we also know that Russia has facilitated, supported uh, uh, the Assad regime in Syria uh, when they used chemical weapons against their own population. So this just highlights the importance of uh, ending this war immediately, because this is a dangerous situation. And therefore we impose the sanctions, so we, therefore we support uh, Ukraine. Um, Allies agreed to supply equipment uh, to help Ukraine protect against uh, chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear threats. Uh, this could include um, uh, detection uh, equipment, uh, protection and medical support, as well as training uh, for the uh, contamination and crisis management. We are also enhancing allies' uh, preparedness and readiness for chemical and biological and nuclear threats. Our top military commander, General Walters, has activated NATO's chemical, biological, uh, radiological, and nuclear defense elements. And allies are deploying additional chemical and biological and nuclear defenses to reinforce our existing and new battle groups. So we are taking measures both to support Ukraine and also to defend ourselves. Okay, we'll go to Al Jazeera. Secretary General James Bayes from Al Jazeera. President Zelensky, when he addressed you, recalled the fact he first spoke to you a month ago 
and he says he didn't get clear answers. So this time he asked you specifically for 1% of all your tanks, for 1% of all your aircraft, for multi-launch rocket systems, anti-ship weapons and means of air defence. A very specific list. What is your clear answer? We all listened very carefully to President Zelensky and uh, many of the leaders in the room uh, have had contact with him over these weeks. I also spoke with him and, uh, and the Ukrainian defense minister participated in our defense ministerial meeting uh, last uh, week. Uh, we listened carefully and of course we took note of his very compassionate message to all NATO uh, allies. NATO allies provide significant support to Ukraine. And we provide also lethal weapons, advanced systems, uh, and also systems that help them to shoot down planes and uh, uh, attack uh, 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 battle tanks with anti-tank weapons and many other types of, uh, uh, of systems, including uh, drones. I will not go into the details of the exact type of systems we are uh, deploying. There is close contact between NATO allies and Ukraine. But what I can say is that allies do what they can to support Ukraine with weapons so Ukraine can defend themselves. Uh, Self-defense is a right enshrined in the UN Charter. At the same time, we have a responsibility uh, to uh, prevent this conflict from becoming a full-fledged war in Europe involving uh, not only Ukraine and Russia, but uh, uh, NATO allies and Russia. That will be more dangerous and more devastating. And, uh, and, and I think we have to be honest about that, and that's exactly what we have been in our meeting today and also what I say to you uh, in the press conference now. Well, what we do is that we are delivering a lot of uh, 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 equipment, and that is an answer, but I will not go into the, uh, the details. I don't think that's wise for operational reasons if I listed exactly what and when and how uh, we are delivering uh, essential equipment to Ukraine. NATO allies uh, have stepped up and it's essential for the progress they have been able to make in the fight against uh, uh, the invading uh, Russian forces. Thank you very much, colleagues. I know there are many questions. I'm afraid the Secretary General needs to go to the G7 meeting, but there will be other briefings throughout the day. Thank you so much. Thank you.